Hey, Dr. Chris. Yeah, what's up? Are you busy? A little bit. Do you have some time to give some fast answers to common sports medicine questions? I can try to give you some quick answers. Well, I'll just jump right in then. So, what's the difference between a strain and a sprain? A strain is an injury of the muscle, sprain is an injury of ligaments. Okay. Yeah, huh? How do I know if I have arthritis? One of the common symptoms of arthritis is joint pain. However, to really know if you have arthritis, that is a clinical decision and you need to have radiographs huh? and you should have an assessment by a medical professional. What is a radiograph? A radiograph is an x-ray. What is the best way to prevent sports injuries? One of the best ways to prevent sports injuries is to make sure that you have an adequate dynamic warm-up and to make sure that you include mobility training in your preparation for sport. Also, you want to make sure that you train in a number of different sports and you train in a number of different ways. Okay. To make sure that you don't um, cause any overuse injuries or set yourself up for, for injury. What is tendonitis and how do you treat it? Tendonitis is an inflammation of the tendon of the muscle. That's the part of the muscle that attaches to the bone. One of the mainstays of treatment for tendonitis is to modify the activity because it's a, typically an overuse injury. So you want to make sure that you change the way that you're training so that you don't overuse the muscle to cause the tendonitis in the first place. How is the shin splint different from a stress fracture? A shin splint is an inflammation of the periosteum of the bone. Periosteum is the covering of the bone. A stress fracture, on the other hand, is an injury of the bone itself, and that's a subacute fracture. So one is an injury of the covering of the bone, the other is an injury to the bone itself. Wow. What causes sciatica? Sciatica is caused by compression of the sciatic nerve, which is one of the major nerves that comes from the spinal cord, or one of its roots in the lumbar spine. Should I stretch before I run? You should always make sure that you do a dynamic warm-up before you run, which includes some stretching movement. However, you should not do static stretching before you run or do an activity. What are DOMS and how do I prevent them? The DOMS stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. And this is a condition that can happen usually 48 to 72 hours after you've had an intense workout. How do you prevent it? You want to make sure that after you've done an intense workout, you include some mobility training to help to rid the body of lactic acid and you help to mobilize or stretch out the tissues that have been active during that activity. Is running barefoot a good or bad idea? Running barefoot is neither a good or a bad idea. Okay. It is, however, how we were evolved to run. The important thing to remember about barefoot running is that it's not something you can just pick up like that. It's something that you need to acclimate or train the body to withstand over time. You have to remember, we have been in shoes since we were children. Oh no, he didn't. Uh, actually, I gotta get up. Can you come with me? Sure. Can I still ask questions? Sure, I'm just checking the workout for today. Okay, um, so why can't I shower after surgery? Anytime we cut the skin, you're at risk for infection. We always want to make sure that we protect the wound following surgery, so we cover it with a dressing. However, if you get the wound wet, the bacteria can travel through the bandage with the water into the wound, and that's a bad thing. What's the best way to deal with pain post-operatively? There's a few things that people should keep in mind. So number one, we order pain medication for you for a reason. Make sure that you take the pain medication that your physician orders. Also, you want to try to follow your surgeon's instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? To make sure that you're doing the appropriate things following surgery. You want to make sure that you rest when it is appropriate and sometimes you can use ice as an analgesic or a pain relieving modality to help with the pain following surgery. 
Now keep in mind that the rice theory, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, first coined by Gabe Merkin in 1978, has more recently been refuted by Gabe Merkin himself because of the detrimental effects of prolonged cold exposure and their effects on healing. There is no need for icing or cold after six hours. And in fact, you should begin movement of the injured extremity as long as there are no fractures or dislocations as soon as 24 hours after the injury. How long does a bone bruise take to heal? Well, depending on the severity of the bone bruise, sometimes it can take up to four months to heal. How can I tell if my knee is infected after surgery? Well, again, that's something that's a clinical diagnosis and you usually need to have the physician tell you that. However, some of the things that could indicate that you may have an infection are an increased temperature, increased redness around the knee or the wound, increased swelling or drainage from the wound. And when I say drainage, I mean green, gross, smelly stuff. How do I know when it's time to get a hip replacement? Well, again, this is a clinical diagnosis, so the ultimate way is to have a orthopedic surgeon give you that uh, information. Oh, this doesn't look very good at all. My nephew drew my portrait. It doesn't look a thing like me. However, if you're having ongoing hip pain, um, which wakes you up at night, which decreases your range of motion, which limits your ability to perform your day-to-day -day activities, and hurts more days than not. These are all symptoms that could suggest that maybe you have arthritis and that should signal to you that's time to see a orthopedic surgeon or a musculoskeletal specialist to get x-rays so that we can confirm the diagnosis. Wow. Do I need surgery to repair a torn rotator cuff? Uh, well, not all rotator cuff injuries are equal. You can have a partial rotator cuff tear or you can have a full rotator cuff tear. Many partial rotator cuff injuries can heal without surgery with the appropriate therapy and the appropriate rehabilitation. However, full thickness rotator cuff tears often will require surgery. Does a broken toe always require surgery? Uh, no, a broken toe does not always require surgery. Many times the fracture is undisplaced and requires only immobilization for a period of time until the fracture heals. How do you fix carpal tunnel syndrome? If you have carpal tunnel syndrome and the diagnosis has been confirmed by EMG studies, we can treat that with a carpal tunnel release, which is a small day surgery. What is a Baker's cyst? Baker's cyst is a collection of fluid behind the knee in an area called the popliteal fossa, and it usually occurs when you have an injury or some type of pathology or problem inside the knee where the knee creates extra fluid in response. What's worse, an ACL or MCL tear? Both of these are ligament injuries of the knee. Of the two, I would say probably that the ACL is worse because more frequently than not, the ACL will require surgery, whereas the MCL can typically be treated non operatively Because I actually don't like talk with doctors. Best workout if you only have 10 minutes. That really depends on what it is that you're trying to do. But if you only have 10 minutes, then I'd say the best bang for the buck is probably to do interval training because you can get an increased heart rate during that time and you can get a very effective workout in a very short period of time. If you just want to be active, then you can go for a walk. Is there a way to fix my bow legs? Unfortunately, fixing your bow legs is not something that you are going to be able to do yourself. And let me reiterate that you cannot change your bow legs by any means other than surgery. No potions, no magic exercises, no injections, no anything else. The only way to change it is surgery. If your bow legs are very mild, then don't worry about it. If the bowing is very significant, then that's something that will require surgical treatment. Will certain exercises wear out my new hip? Generally, after you've had a hip replacement, we don't want you to do impact activities because those will increase the wear of your hip. But other than impact activities, you can pretty much do almost anything else. Three and bump, bump. Wow. Why do I get knee pain when I run? There can be many causes of knee pain when you run. Ah! 
But one of the most common causes is called patellofemoral syndrome. And usually this comes from weakness of the VMO or the inside part of the quad muscle. Does a torn meniscus always require surgery? A torn meniscus does not always require surgery. It really depends on the nature of the tear, its acuity, whether it's something that occurred suddenly or it's been there over time, the size of the tear, and whether it's unstable or not. Usually a combination of all of these factors will determine whether it's an operative problem or non-operative problem. When is it time to get surgery to treat bunions? Bunion surgery is a subjective problem. And by that I mean it's really up to the patient to determine how much pain they are having from this problem. Contrary to popular belief, we don't just fix bunions because of their appearance. We typically fix bunions because of the pain that they are causing or because of problems that they cause with the other toes. Is it normal for toes to point out when you stand? Um, so what you're talking, are you looking at my feet? So what you're talking about is what we call foot progression angle. And typically for most people, when they stand, their toes don't point straight ahead. Most people have a foot progression angle between five and 10 degrees. A small degree of external rotation where your toes pointing out is normal. Anything over and above 10 degrees is starting to get into what we might consider abnormal or a problem. How do I treat an ankle sprain at home? The quick fix to treat an ankle sprain is generally for some immediate rest after the time of injury. You want to elevate the extremity to help deal with swelling. You want to use some cold for a short period of time to help decrease some of the initial inflammatory response, but only a short period of time. And you want to use some compression to help to decrease some of the um, swelling and inflammation. And I can't answer any more questions because uh, I got some patients and I got some paperwork to do before that. So um, uh, I gotta just, get out of here. Okay. okay. Thanks, Dr. Chris. No problem. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday voice.